All right, so now we're going to implement the sign up and the login functionality in our GraphQL server. So here we're inside of the schema.prisma. What we're gonna do is we're going to make some modifications to our link and also add a brand new data model. So here you can see we have a link model, which in this case I have added a user and also a posted by ID. In this case, it's gonna be the user ID. So this posted by is going to create a relation between the link and the user. So in this case, we're going to have one link per user. And for user, in this case, you can see we have the user ID, which is a auto increment ID. And then we also have a name, email, which is unique, and then a password. In this case, for links, we have an array of links. In this case, for each user, we can have multiple links. But for each link, it can either have a user or it, does, or it is optional to have a user. So some link might not have a user. So that's why we have a question mark here, which means that it's optional. So after we made this change to our data model, we're going to migrate our database and then regenerate our Prisma client. All right, so inside of the server, we're going to run the MPX Prisma migrate. In this case, we're going to add a new version of a database and we're going to call it the add user model. And here you can see it says that the following migration have been created and applied from the new schema changes. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to open the source slash schema.graphql. And then inside of that, we're going to add some additional mutations. In this case, we're going to add the sign up and the logins. So once we add the sign up and the login, you can see it takes the email and the password and the name for the sign up and the login. In this case, we take the email and the password, which in this case, they both return us a authenticated payload. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to define the auth payload as well as the user. So here you can see, here is the type for the authenticated payload. In this case, it takes the token and the user. And for type user, in this case, it has an ID, name, email, and links. And then finally, we're going to reflect this relation between the user and the link by adding a new additional field inside of the link type. In this case, we're going to have the posted by, which is a type user. So in this case, when we try to query a link, we can also be able to have the additional ability to query the user who created this link. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to implement our resolvers. So here you can see inside of the resolvers, we have our query and mutations. And we're going to also add the link and the user. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new folder called resolvers. And inside of that, we're going to have the query.js as well as the mutation.js. Then we're also going to have the user.js. And then we also have the link.js. And inside of the query, you can see that we're going to have the feed. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this data to the resolvers in the queries. Uh, and then we're going to import our query and then be able to add it here inside of our resolver. All right, so here you can see we have our query and mutations, and we could basically put our post logic inside of the mutation.js. And if we were to start our server again and try to run a request, you can see we still have data shown here. All right, so then what I did here is I gone ahead and add some functionality inside of our mutation. So here you can see I have added the login and the sign up. So for the sign up here, you can see I basically have the password created and then we're going to take the arguments for the user and then we're going to create this user inside of our database and then assign a token and return the token and the user to the user, uh, to the response. And then we also have the login. In this case, we are going to find the user first. And then once, if we cannot find it, we're going to throw an error. If we do find it, then we're going to first compare the password. And if it's not valid, we're going to throw the invalid password error. And then we're also going to create a token based on the user ID, and we're also gonna use the app secret. So this is gonna be the secret private key that we're gonna to use to create our JWP token. And then we're gonna return the token and the user back to the, to the response. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pass the login and the sign up. And inside of the util file, you can see we have an app secret here. So this is going to be the, our private key that we're going to use to create our JWT token. And of course, having just the token returned from the signup and the login is not enough. We also need to authenticate it using the JWT token verify function. So to do so, what we can do is we can be able to add this functionality inside of the query, the user, all the resolvers that we have. Or the other way we can do this is we can be able to add this functionality inside of the context so that all the resolvers that we have has the access to the user ID uh, from the request the headers. And here for the context, we can be able to turn it into a function and we can get the request. In this case, inside of the request, we have the header.authorization and we're gonna take the request 
And then inside of the get user ID, in this case, what we're gonna do for this function is that it's going to get the token. And then once it has the token, we're going to verify that and then get the user ID and then return that and pass it to our contacts so that we can be able to use it in our resolvers. So to use it inside of our resolvers, what we're gonna do is inside of the mutation.js, here you can see we already have the post function. In this case, we're creating a new link inside of the link table. Um, so basically what I did here is that when we create a link, we're going to get the user ID from the context, which we already know that is getting it from the token from the request header. And then once we have the user ID, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to set a connection, which connects to the ID from the user table. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to start our server and try to test it out. So here you can see we're inside of the playground. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to create a user. So by sign up, in this case, we have the name, email, and password. And then what we want to do is we want to get the token, the ID, and also the name, okay? So if we were to run the request, you can see that we have the token, the name and such. And then what we're gonna do is that in the request header, we're going to have the authorization and we also have a beer token. In this case for the token, we're going to replace the token here from the newly generated response. So when we create a new link, we're going to have the user add it to the link as well. So here you can see, I basically create a new link. In this case, uh, we have the URL, the description, and then since we're passing in the, since we pass in the JWP token, since we have the JWT token, in this case, we're going to set the post. In this case, we're going to set link. Uh, in this case, we're going to set a user to a link. In this case, we're assigning a user to a link uh, using, in this, in this case, we're assigning a link. Uh, in this case, we're assigning a user to this link. And then for the link, you can see that we have new record that's added. And this is the post about ID. And of course, we can also be able to log in to our application. Um, so, we'll, we'll, so we're looking to get the token and the user object. And what we want is we want to get the email and all the links that the user created. So in this case, we're getting null for the user.links. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to ensure the relation between the user and the link are properly resolved. So basically what's gonna happen is that every time when we try to query the user, we're going to define the links field. In this case, we have the function called links, and this basically going to take the parent.id, which in this case is gonna be the user ID. And then we're going to find the database to find that user particular user, and we're going to call the dot links to get all the links from that user. And we also, for link.js, we also have the post by, in this case, we're going to define the post by field. So in this case, we're going to get the ID from the parents, which is the link ID. So once we find that particular link, we're going to call the post by function. Uh, in this case, we're going to get a user who created this link. And we basically add this inside of the resolvers. So you can see we have the user and the link. And now if we were to restart our server and try to refresh that and try to run this, so here you can see when we try to query for the user, we do have all the links that the user created. And of course, we can also be able to use the user ID from the context in other parts of the query. So here you can see, I also create another function called fetch by current user ID. In this case, it's very similar. We're going to get the user first and to get all the links that the user creates. Okay, so here you can see I start a server and have the query for the use feed by current user ID. And I'm looking for the URL and the description. Here you can see I added the token for the headers. And if we were to send a request, you can see that we only have one data for this user.